Grimbergen hop character. Life is too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Bose Reviews. What have we got? We have got a bottle of Grimbergen hop character. Hublos. Hublon. Whatever that is. That's a blonde beer. Um, all sorts of alarm bells are ringing with this brewery. Um, I got this because it was cheap from Beers of Europe and now I know why. Um, there are so many dodgy fingers involved in this pie. It's not true. Heineken brew this shit in Belgium. Carlsberg brew it outside of Belgium. In France, it's brewed by Cronenberg. And it's brewed by Carlsberg in Poland as well. And everything about this says avoid, avoid, avoid. But I'm going to put all my prejudices aside and I'm going to try this out. Uh, the brewery I know very little about. They're an amalgamation of two breweries in Belgium and they brew a variety of stuff they do a double which I've got downstairs and they do this as well and as it's a hot day out here when it's April beginning of April when it's fucking roasting out there so I thought I'll try this instead of the double so let's get it open and let's see what's going on right here is the label. It has got a phoenix on the front of it. And there is the back, all in Flemish. Nice embossed bod bottle there, brown bottle. And there is the cap with another phoenix on it. I don't know if you can see that or not. There it is. Let's crack it open and let's see what gives. I'm gonna use my K bar to open this up. So let's crack this open and see what's going on. You can hear a hissing noise in the back, don't worry about it. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, as the film said. Right, on the nose, out of the bottle, what have we got? Mmm. We've got some hops, and we've got some spice. A little bit of clove, slight banana, as you would expect from a Belgian blonde. But this has supposedly got some hops hop character on it so let's get it into the glass and see what gives in the glass I'm using my Steenbrugger um, chalice here because because I can so here we go wow lots of carbonation in it it's a 330ml bottle and this is 8% sorry I should have said that earlier um, yeah, 8%, so I'm going to have to go easy on this. The fucking carbonation in this. Look at that. Can you see that? That is insanity. From the head on it. I can't even get half a pint into the glass with all that combina uh, carbonation. There is a little bit left in the bottle. I'll keep that for when this calms down. So there it is. It's come out of the fridge, so it's pretty cold and it's cloudy, hazy, whatever you want to call it. Carbonation is just absolutely off the scale. There is one and a half, possibly, yeah, two finger white head on that. Tightly packed foam bubbles and white head on the nose. Yeah, more of the same. But on a clove spice, slight hops, but it's all very subdued, which is not a good sign. But let's see what is on the palette. I've managed to just get it all in there now. Cheers.
Wow. That is strong. Immediate spirit alcohol coming out of that. Really intense. Almost <clears throat> like the um, like the stuff I tried yesterday, which was the um, what was it? <laughs> I can't remember what it was. I tried. I reviewed a Belgian yesterday, and I can't remember what the name of it was. But it reminds me of that. I think it was a double. It's gone. It's gone. This is what happens when you get old. You start losing your fucking marbles. Right. Let's dive in again because all I got there was just masses of spirit alcohol. Okay. So, on the tongue, you do get the spirit alcohol. Then you get the banana, you get the clove, you get coriander, and it's like a zesty orange peel that's in that. Surprisingly though, and they call this hop character, I'm not getting much of the hops in there at all. Um, all right, so this contains syrup of glucose, extract of hop, sugar. I'm translating this from French, and it, it's got all kinds of shit in it. But hop extract is one of them. Um, it's harsh. Now I tried the um, the Castile Blonde, which for me was amazing. It was so easy drinking, and that was seven percent. But you never would have known that there was seven percent in the alcohol stakes. This, I mean, it does look good, to be fair. But the carbonation. Gives it a slightly rough mouthfeel, which stops you from absolutely necking it. But it, don't get me wrong, there is a, there are a lot of flavours in this, and it sounds like I'm bashing it, but I'm not. Um, there's a lot of that, as I say, a lot of that typical Belgian spice that you get from their blondes and their even their doubles as well. Sometimes you get that. That spicy note, the banana, the clove, and there's an orange, I think it's orange or lemon rind or peel in that. I'm getting some of that as well. There's a slight bitterness. It's not, well, it could be coming from the hops, I don't know, but that's not normally how the Belgians flavour their beer. It is actually orange peel or lemon or other type of adjuncts that they add, or flavourings, if you like, that they add which give it a unique flavour. And this is, to be fair, this is uniquely Belgian. You wouldn't mistake this for anything else. It's not bad. It's not bad, but it doesn't really do much for me at all. Oh, I just remembered the other one I was trying yesterday was the Orval was the Orval, which was really good. I really like that. And it, rem <clears throat> it reminded me of that as well, because that was one to savour. It wasn't one to neck down. And this one isn't really either, although I'm making a good stab at it, to be fair. <laughs> but all in all, it is quite flavoursome. You can't say it's bland. It should be ringing all sorts of alarm bells with me because of, you know, the Carlsbergs and the Heineken and the Cronenberg and all that. I don't know which country this was brewed in, but on its own merits, just not even taking that into consideration, this is good. And 
it's got all the characteristics I would expect from a Belgian blonde. As I say, it's quite tasty. There's nothing there that would make me say this is a poor imitation or it's a badly brewed Belgian beer. It's quite good, I quite like it. The, the carbonation is a bit of an issue for me though, it does give it a slightly rough mouthfeel. And I don't know whether you can see that, but it's still going for it now. Which is good I suppose, if you want to drink that through a head. You know, it's going to keep that head going, but it does give it a little bit of a rough mouthfeel. I didn't get that with a Castile Blonde, and that was that was amazing, that was really good. This stuff is a little harder to get down. But that's, that's just a minor gripe. It's nice, it's full of banana, full of clove, full of uh, all the spices you'd expect from the, the yeast that they use, the esters that come off the yeast that they use in Belgian beer. There's like slight pepper and all that. So yeah, it's, it's a tasty Belgian beer. I would give that a seven out of 10. And this is cheap. This is just over two pound a bottle, which to be fair for a, you know, a, a beer of this type is relatively cheap. Yeah, unless you're gonna go for the leffer stuff and all that. This is better than leffer, I will say that. So, I'd recommend it if you can see it cheap. Normally beers of Europe or one of the European um, beer importers will do stuff like this quite cheap. If you see it and you, you do like this style, then get it because you won't go wrong. You, it's got a, a really good flavor and it, and because it's cheap, I'm gonna give it a higher mark. I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. If it was expensive, I would have dropped like a mark or two but because it's just over two pounds, that's, you cannot go wrong with it. That is full flavoured, it's 8% as well, so you know, it's keeping, the, keeping it to the right sort of alcohol levels. And yeah, no complaints, seven out of 10, recommended for the price. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>